Hey, it's Vicki, and today I'm here to share with you my reading wrap-up for March. March ended up being a really good month. I read 13 things, and I also, of those 13 things, I had three five-star reads, which I can't remember the last time I had multiple, like that many five-star reads in one month. So yeah, it was a pretty good month, so let's get into it. So there are a couple of books that I read in March that I'm not going to talk about here because I already talked about them in other videos. So the first is I read three Goosebumps books for middle grade March uh, just because I loved Goosebumps as a kid and I wanted to revisit some of them. And I did a whole vlog about it so I will link that if you are interested in my deep thoughts on the Goosebumps books. But I read The Ghost Next Door, which I gave four stars to. I actually really enjoyed this one. Um, I read The Girl Who Cried Monster. This one, not so much. This was a two star. And then I read Let's Get Invisible, and this one was right in the middle with a three star. And then I also did a standalone book review for Son of the Deep by KB Hoyle. Um, this one was sent to me for review, and uh, yeah, I really enjoyed it. It was a four star read. It's basically a retelling of The Little Mermaid. And so, yeah, a gender bun retelling, I should say. So yeah, that one was really good. I gave it four stars, but if you want my full in-depth thoughts on it, go check out that book review. So the first book that I completed in March was a nonfiction book called What the Eyes Don't See by Mona Hanna-Attisha. And this one, I listened to it on audio. It was narrated by Dr. Mona herself. And this one is about her experience uh, as a pediatrician during in Flint during the beginnings of the Flint water crisis. And so the, you know, it's all kind of her perspective of that whole thing. Uh, and it was really, it's one of those books that was really frustrating to read because you just get so mad <laughs> that it was pretty clear early on that the water in Flint um, was not good. And if you guys don't aren't familiar with the Flint water crisis, um, a city in Michigan, Flint, uh, they switched over from Detroit uh, the Detroit water system, which is like the biggest water system kind of used in like southeastern Michigan, really. Um, they switched over um, in an attempt to save money uh, to like their kind of do their own water thing. And they they got started getting their water from the Flint River and the Flint River, the Flint River. Wow. Was really um, it had a lot of lead in it and it was very corrosive and basically it was toxic. Um, to the people that were drinking it and especially her perspective uh, she was thinking about children and babies and how horrible lead is for them um, and so she was one of the first people to really see what the, what was going on and kind of like was like a whistleblower and so yeah this definitely made me want to read more about this crisis maybe a more broader um, like reporting style maybe like maybe like a book if I could find one that's written by maybe a reporter or somebody who is a little bit more outside of it and is kind of covers it in a more broad scope because her experience is her experience as a doctor as a pediatrician um, and so she kind of only knows what what she knows and what she experienced and so I kind of want I would love to get a more broad um, look at the whole thing and so it, it's very emotional. It, like I said, you get really mad <laughs> reading this book. Um, the only thing about this um, was that she, because it is a memoir, she does talk a lot about her family. But the thing about it, which I don't mind in a memoir, but the thing about this was a lot of it um, was about like her like family history, like her grandparents and like all this kind of stuff. And a lot of the like kind of anecdotal little stories about her family uh, had nothing to do with the subject at hand and so I was kind of like this is kind of irrelevant um, obviously the stuff where she talked about like her husband and her children and like what she was like during that time and what it, what it kind of, how it kind of affected her family that obviously made sense to me um, and like the stuff about why she became a doctor and all that kind of stuff and maybe a little bit about her parents and everything but um, the yeah the other stuff about her family was I, like I said it, it just didn't seem to fit in with the rest of the book but yeah, it was good. Uh, definitely has made me want to read up more about it, and I gave this one four out of five stars. So the next book that I completed in March was for middle grade March, which is it was a month long readathon that was going on through March, where basically you were encouraged to read middle grade books, and there were five prompts, and so I have five books that fit that fit the prompts and fit the readathon. And the first one was to read a book 
featuring an orphan um, main character and so I read Locomotion by Jacqueline Woodson. This is a book that is told in verse and what was really cool about this was the book was about our main character his, he goes by locomotion. Um, his name was Lonnie, I believe. Was that his name? Um, but anyways, he uh, lost his parents in a fire when he was younger and is with a uh, foster um, mom. And he's in school learning about poetry and how to write poetry. And then the book is also told in poetry. So it's like, a, it's kind of like a, a book about poetry written in poetry, if that makes any sense. <laughs> it was just a really cool way to tell the story. Um, and he just, it's, it's just about his life and what it's like um, to be a young black kid in the foster care system. Um, he has a younger sister, was she younger? I think she was younger. That he only sees occasionally because she's with another um, foster family. And so it's just about, you know, his daily life and his, um, his still, you know, his grief that he's still processing and everything, and it was just wonderful. Um, Jacqueline Woodson is so talented, <laughs> and I, I, this is the second of her books that I've read, and this one was great. I really enjoyed it. Yeah, I gave it four stars. The next book that I read in March was one of my five-star reads. <laughs> I was just floored by this book, and that is The Last House on Needless Street by Katriona Ward, or Katrina Ward, I think is how you actually say it. And this is a thriller, um, and it's one of those that it's better if you go into it just knowing nothing. Um, so I'm not going to really tell you much about the plot, except it deals with, uh, there's a couple of different perspectives. There's a perspective from a man named, I think his name was Todd, if I remember right. Ted, sorry, his name was Ted. And then a perspective from his cat, um, what was her name? Olivia. <laughs> and one other perspective by a uh, from a, another woman. And that's all I'm going to tell you about the plot because it's better if you just don't know anything. But basically this one floored me. And I know like some people uh, in their reviews didn't really love this one as much maybe because they kind of got the twist right away or at some point in the book they got the twist. I didn't pick up on the twist. So <laughs> when it happened I was floored and I was just like wow. And it's just a really good book like a good psychological book and just it was great <laughs> this is one of the best thrillers that I've read in a long time I really really enjoyed it five stars and I get that it might not be for everyone because I know some people don't like perspectives from animals and you do get that in here um, like I said there is a perspective that is from a cat uh, I happen to really enjoy it I thought it was different and I really liked it so yeah that's all I'm gonna say about it if, if it if you're even a little bit interested Go ahead and pick it up. The next book I read was another five-star read. I read this one for middle grade March, and this one was to read a contemporary book. So I read Ghost by Jason Reynolds. This is my first time reading Jason Reynolds. It certainly won't be the last. And in fact, this is the first book in a series. It's called the Track Series. And I definitely want to read the rest of the books. This is about um, a young boy named Castle Cranshaw, but he goes by Ghost. And he, uh, three years before the book takes place, he experienced a, something pretty traumatic um, and is still uh, processing that and kind of like figuring out his life post this event. And he basically joins a track team kind of by accident. He kind of gets, um, what's the word? He just, he kind of gets picked to join this team. Um, and I think anybody that has ever been a part of a team or um, any sort of like activity or group um, club or anything like that will really love this book because it is so much about what it is like to be part of a team and kind of the bond that you have with your teammates, the bond that you have with your coach. And Ghost learns so much um, about like trusting people and just about like having those kinds of relationships uh, through being on this team. And I just, I loved this. It was, it was at times very heartbreaking, um, but it was so also so hopeful and it just, it just was so good. <laughs> you know, and there's parts, obviously Ghost, um, being a young kid, he makes some mistakes, he does some dumb things, but he learns from those mistakes. Um, and he just was a character that I just, I just loved. I just loved him. And so yeah, I definitely want to read the other books because this was great. And yeah, it was a five star read. 
The next book that I read in March was another one I read for middle grade March and this one fulfilled the prompt to read a book um, either that took place in Asia or centered around an Asian main character and so I read Other Words for Home by Jasmine Warga. And this is about a young girl named Judah who moves from Syria to Ohio after uh, it becomes kind of tumultuous in her home her hometown. So her and her mom um, leave her dad and brother in Syria and they move to Ohio to live with her aunt and uncle. And it's just about her adjusting to life in America because it is very different from her life in Syria. And I just, I really enjoyed this. It was told through verse and I should mention, I listened to the audiobook of this um, on Scribd and it was narrated by, I have it written down, I wanna say, I, I'm probably gonna pronounce the name wrong, I'm sorry, uh, Vanna Asadurian was the narrator and it was this was a great audiobook highly recommended on audio but it's told through in verse um and i just really liked it uh judah was a really good character i really liked her um she was so um kind of like open-minded even though she was still obviously very connected to her culture and her home um and missed her home she also was um open to you know things in america and how things were different and she just had such a good outlook um on life and i just i really liked her and so this was a good one i really liked it i think that kids would get a lot from reading this because it is so much about kind of accepting others especially those that are different from you um and just being like resilient and you know all of that so yeah, this was good. I gave it four stars. Next up in March, I read American Street by E.B. Zaboy. This one I actually listened to on audio. It was narrated by Robin Miles, who I have listened to a couple audiobooks narrated by her, and she is fantastic. She's one of my favorite narrators, becoming one of my favorite narrators. So yeah, if you're going to read this, I highly recommend the audiobook. <laughs> it's um, about a young girl named Fabiola who um, is coming to America from Haiti with her mom and when they get into the country her mom is held up um, and is uh, detained I had to think of the word and she goes ahead and because she technically she is an American citizen she was born in America but she grew up in Haiti so she's able to come through her mom is not so she goes on to uh, Detroit to live with her aunt and her three cousins and it's just about her adjusting to Kind of like other words from for home it's about her kind of adjusting to america and i really liked that this had a detroit setting because obviously um i live in metro detroit and so some of the places that like are mentioned and stuff like for example there's a scene where she goes to the detroit opera house to see a performance and i'm like oh my gosh i've been there a couple of times it's a beautiful venue like i knew what she was talking about you know and so that's kind of cool that was kind of cool to have that sort of uh local connection and i really liked fabiola as a character because i liked that she was very open to you know the american way of doing things sometimes sometimes but she also really held on to her you know her culture her traditions her um her faith system and all of that so i really liked her because she was um she was open-minded but she was also like i know who i am and what i'm about and that sort of thing and so i i liked her uh the downside to this was the other characters um like her cousins in particular for some reason they got on my nerves <laughs> they were just like sometimes just a bit too dramatic just a bit too much for me um so uh, yeah so it ended up being kind of fabiola was kind of the only character that i really ended up really liking and then the plot itself was just okay for me it was fine and i know like as it, as it got closer to the ending it got really intense where I was like, wow, okay. Um, but overall, I wasn't like blown away by the plot. This was good. I enjoyed it. Like I said, I, I really recommend the audiobook for this. Uh, but I gave this one three out of five stars. The next book that I read in March was actually one that was a middle grade book, but I didn't read it for middle grade March. <laughs> um, this one was actually sent home from Leia's elementary school. Uh, every March, they send 
the same book home to every family in the school and kind of have everybody read it together and then they also send home a calendar where uh you know with chapter breakdowns like what days to read what chapters and then they kind of do fun activities throughout the month at school that are tied in to the book so this year they sent home the pet war by alan woodrow this is about two brother two brothers two siblings a brother and sister um otto and lexi and otto is our main character and basically they decide to have a competition because otto really really wants a dog as a pet and lexi wants a cat and so their mom says, okay, um, pets are expensive, pets are a lot of responsibility, so you guys have a month to raise $500. Whoever gets to $500 by the end of the month wins and gets to get the pet of their choice. So the whole book is about them kind of having this competition and like being at war with each other. And this was a fun book to read. Um, I liked how it kind of dealt with competition first of all <laughs> uh, and also like responsibility because you see kind of as the book progresses Otto becomes more responsible because he becomes more serious about what he's doing and what he wants and so you kind of see his attitude change and also ingenuity it also kind of deals with because they have to come up with their own way of somehow coming up with $500 and so you kind of see Otto try different things different ways to make money and so it was it was kind of interesting to see that as well I also liked in this book that Otto and Lexi's parents were divorced and so it was nice to kind of see a book where the parents are not together because as we know here in America you know half of the families that's how they are so it was nice to kind of see that sort of rep in a book um, and the only kind of like thing that I, I guess was a little bit much for me sometimes was the sibling rivalry the way that they were just always especially Otto was so anti Lexi all the time and just was always just like really hating on her when she didn't really deserve it all that much you know and so after, for after a while I was just like wow like <laughs> just calm it down with the rivalry but in the end you know things turned out okay so yeah this was a fun one we I read it out loud you know um, to the kids every day and they really enjoyed it It was fun it was a just kind of a fun feel-good story and yeah we gave it three out of five stars next up is the third five-star read that I had in March and I finished this on the last day of the month <laughs> um, but it was fabulous and that is snowflower and the secret fan by Lisa C this is about a it takes place in 19th century China and it's about a girl named Lily. When we meet her, she is, I believe, five years old. And uh, it sort of takes you through her life. She's telling the story as, I think, an 80-year-old woman. I want to I say she's 80. And she's telling you this story about how she um, came to have this really special friendship. Um, they call it a Laotong with a girl named Snowflower. And they were kind of matched together because they had certain qualities. Like I think they like had the same birthday. They had the same number of siblings, um, all that sort of thing. And so they were kind of matched to basically be lifelong friends. And, and so you kind of see their relationship change as they grow and um, as they get married and all that sort of stuff. This book was so beautifully written, but also so brutal. Like I don't think I've ever read a book that was so brutal but yet so beautifully done um <laughs> it's not the type of book that's going to make you feel good even in the end it's not the type of book that's going to um give you hope or anything like that this is a very difficult heartbreaking read i will definitely say that but the writing i loved it i loved loved learning about the Chinese customs of that time period. It was so fascinating to me, just so interesting, because basically I knew nothing. It's made me want to seek out more books um, that take place during this time period, because it was just interesting. Because it goes into, uh, obviously, the, the foot binding custom that they had at the time, um, which was incredibly brutal. Uh, but also kind of just like, the way that the families were structured, the kind of hierarchy within households and within even just like the towns and stuff, just basically what it was like to be a girl and later on a woman in China in this time. It was just so fascinating to me. So yes, this book will break your heart, but it was so informative, so great. I loved it. And yeah, it was five stars. I 
loved it. And then the last book that I read in March was for middle grade March as well. And this one was to read a book that was older than me. So this book was published in 1971. So it was older than me. And I read Mrs. Frisbee and the Rats of Nim by Robert C. O'Brien. And this is the, the book that the movie The Secret of Nim is based on. So I went into it basically knowing what the plot was going to be because um, I've seen the movie, although it's been a while. But this is about a little mouse named Mrs. Frisbee who lives in on a farm. Um, she lives in a little cinder block house, that, like a little cinder block um, that she's kind of made her home. And she's a widow and she has four children. And it's get getting to be that time of year where she has to move from, she's in the garden and has to move to the meadow um, because the garden is going to start to get tilled up and stuff. It's not safe, so she has to move. But her son Timothy is really sick and can't be moved. So um, she gets some advice from um, a couple other animals um, to have these rats that live in a rose bush a little ways away um, to get them to get the rats to help her. And so that's pretty much the gist of the story. Um, and overall, this was this was a good story. Um, there was a big section in the middle that was really boring though. <laughs> I really was losing interest. I even considered DNFing because I was just like, this is not interesting at all. But then it kind of ended up in the end picking up again and being a good, good story. And I really liked Mrs. Frisbee. Um, I thought that she was just a very, you know, sweet, kind mouse who really, you know, would do anything for her kids. And so, I mean, obviously, as a mom, I appreciate that. <laughs> and, uh, but it was just like, it was okay, you know. Um, like I said, there was that whole section that was pretty boring. Uh, I think, I, I think I want to give the movie another watch. Um, and I think this might be one of those instances where the movie is better than the book. But I'll let you guys know when I, if I ever do watch the movie. Maybe I'll do a flicks and lit, I don't know. But yeah, overall, this was cute. It was it was good. Um, it was a three-star read. All right, guys, so that is everything that I read in March. Like I said, it was a lot of stuff, um, a lot of middle grade, which is probably why the number was a little higher than normal because um, some of the stuff was pretty short. But to have three five-star reads, I was so excited about that. Um, and yeah, middle grade March, of course, was a success. I fulfilled all five prompts, and it was really fun. Really enjoyed it. Can't wait for next year. Um, so yeah, let me know down below what you read in March. What was your favorite book? Because I would love to hear that. And yeah, that's it. So I hope you guys have a wonderful week and I will chat with you soon. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.